This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome to Voice of the Veteran on Think Tech live streaming network series, broadcasting from our downtown studios at Pioneer Plaza at the core of downtown Honolulu. I'm your host, Helen Dora Hyden, veteran advocate. Joining me in the studio today is Robert Kent, immediate past department commander of the Disabled American Veterans Department of Hawaii. Today we're going to talk about the Disabled American Veterans and what's going, out, what's going on throughout the state. And at the very end of our show, we're going to talk about the last week's town hall meeting that the VA hosted. Robert was there, and he'll talk to us a little bit about the highlights of the meeting. Glad to have you here, Robert. Okay. Remember that our talk shows are streamed live on the internet from 12 noon to 5 p.m. every weekday, and earlier shows are streamed all night long. All our shows are streamed on Livestream.com. If you want the links to our live stream on pre or previous broadcasts, which are available on YouTube.com, or if you want to subscribe to our programs to get on our mailing list and get our program advisories, go to ThinkTechHawaii.com. If you want to comment during one of our shows, please tweet us at ThinkTechHI. We'll try to get to some questions by the end of the show. Robert, thank you so much. From one past department commander to another, I salute you and thank you for being thank you. here. Thank you. So as a member of Disabled American Veterans myself, I joined back in 1994. But tell me about your military career and what got you involved in Disabled American Veterans. Let's well, start with I, your military career. My military career started in 1955 when I joined the Army in West Virginia. And then I went, uh, went through my training at Cape Cod, Georgia, and then at Fort Leonard Missouri. And then I came to Hawaii in 1965 and joined the 25th Division. Went to Vietnam at the 25th Division, came back, was stationed at Schofield for three years. And then I went to Japan and worked in the hospital in Japan as communications for uh, HF radio, ham radio, oh. so that we could communicate with the veterans that was in the hospital, and they could talk to their loved ones in the mainland over the radio. The only problem was, you say, hello, honey, how are you? Over. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So when did you get out of the military? I got out in uh, September of 1975. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Yes, thank you. And so how did you get uh, knowledge about the Disabled American Veterans, better known as DAV? I had a friend of mine that asked me to be the hospital service coordinator, transportation network coordinator, uh, in uh, 2008. And I took that job on for three years. And then from there, I went to uh, American Legion asked me to be a service officer, so I went to school to be a service officer. And then uh, a year or two later, the uh, DAV asked me to be the, the department commander, so I took the job as department commander. And you served two consecutive years, is that correct, as department yes. commander? And you were the current uh, outgoing, you're the immediate past department commander. Right. Perfect. Well, I was commander in 2013, 14. 2015 and 16. This and should make you commander for life. <laughs> <laughs> You've been such a proponent for helping veterans on this island, Bob. Whenever okay. I talk to everybody, they go, do you know Bob Kent? I'm like, yes, I have the pleasure of, of knowing Bob Kent. And it's an honor to be in the same organization with you serving veterans and their families. Thank you. So we've got some slides that I prepared. If we can just uh, talk a little bit about them as they are being presented. Uh, DAV is a national service organization. Um, a lot of people don't know about the organization. They're the top three. There's American Legion, VFW, and DAV. We have over a million members. And so DAV.org, if you want to find out more information about DAV, you can check them out. Uh, in Hawaii, we've got multiple chapters, and we'll uh, show the location of those chapters in a little bit. But I want to talk about the National Service Office here in Honolulu. Uh, it is located over at uh, the East Wing of Tripler Army Hospital. Tripler Army Hospital. How many National Service Offices officers do we have currently? We have three National Service Officers at this time. And they are, uh, if you need to contact them, on Monday and Friday, you have to have an appointment. And you can call 433-0490 to set up an appointment. On Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, it's first come, first serve, walk in. And uh, you sit there and wait until they call your name. And then you go in and get your 
information that you need. What you need to bring with you is your DD-214 and any medical records that you might have when you was in the military that shows that you got injured or you got hurt. Great. And um, also, I want to let people know, if you go to DAV.org, you can find any national service officer. Uh, just type it in. It'll right. bring you to any state. They're all over the nation, plus Puerto Rico. So definitely check that out. It's one of the, uh, DAV helped me do my claim personally when right. I got started back in the 90s. So I was very excited about being part of DAV as a member and learning about all the services that they offered. Uh, for people that are getting out of the military, they have a program called Transition Service Officers. And that is our next slide that we're going to talk about. And these are for uh, people that are getting out. Uh, they have claim work that they do called BDD claims, benefits deliverable upon discharge. Right. If you have 180 days from the time you're getting out of the military, you can file a claim with these uh, men and ladies. So let, let us talk about what's uh, available here in Hawaii. Well, hi, at Schofield Barracks, we have a woman named Pamela. Oh, I can't remember the last Pamela. name. <laughs> Pamela was her name, and she's a retired colonel. And she does the uh, transition of service officer for Schofield, on, on uh, Pearl Harbor, and Hickam, and different days. You can contact her through the National Service Officer at 433 and they will uh, give you uh, direct contact with her. In uh, Kaneohe, we have a man named uh, Orlando Perez. Orlando Perez, and he is uh, comes into the National Service Officer once a week, but he has an office at the Marine Corps base, where for the Marines. Perfect. And their contact number out there? I don't have his contact number with them. Eight zero eight two five four seven six eight two. Right. So that's wonderful that they have all these uh, services. Now these services for veterans and their families, if they want to file claims or get information about their services, they are free of charge. Uh, DAV is chartered through Congress from 1932, so they are here to assist veterans free. There's no fee whatsoever. Uh, if you want to become a member of the DAV or the Disabled American Veterans or the Auxiliary, they always have applications for membership. Yes. So you can always talk to the service officers about that also. And not only that, if you was married to a service officer that has passed away, the widows do have benefits and they can get their benefits through the VA, uh, through the uh, Disabled American Veterans Service Officer. Yes, thank you for that. The next thing we're going to talk about is what's near and dear to your heart, because you mentioned that you were a hospital service coordinator that runs van program, transportation program. Right. Just a quick down and dirty history, uh, there was the VA used to provide transportation to veterans, but because of funding cuts, they took that program away. And luckily, DAV picked up that ball like we always do, and we worked together with Ford Motor Company and partnered up and got vans donated, and they are donated to the VA facilities, but the chapter raised money locally also. So let us talk a little bit about what's offered here. I know we have a gentleman, Mr. Donald Wood, here that works out of Tripler. Can you talk to us a little bit about the van program? Right here, uh, Donald Wood is the uh, hospital transportation network coordinator. He has to go to different islands, we, to uh, Hilo, to Kula, to Maui, to uh, Kauai, and to Honolulu. And he coordinates all the vans on each island. These vans are bought by the disabled American veterans here in Hawaii. We provide half of the cost of the van, which is 14500 And now we've got three vans in uh, the big island, one van in Hilo, one van in, uh, ca ca and we got two vans on Oahu and one in uh, Kailua. I mean in uh, Kauai. 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 Yeah. Kauai. Well, thank you for all that. I know that these vans are there. Um, it takes a lot of effort and coordination to run this van program, and it's all volunteer drivers, from my understanding. Yes, we have all volunteer drivers. I'm one of the volunteer drivers here on Oahu. But uh, <clears throat> to get a volunteer driver, you don't have to be military. You can be in the fire department, you can be a police officer. Anytime that you have some free time, you can call 
that 433-7749 and volunteer to be in, uh, they got the phone number wrong, there. Wrong. Okay, we'll make sure that everybody's got that yeah. number right. That's 7749 is the full number. And you can volunteer to be a driver one day a month, one day a week, or one day every two weeks, whatever day you might have off. And what the drivers do, they will go from Triple Army Medical Center to the house of the veteran that has got a doctor's appointment. Pick him up and bring him in to the VA for the doctor's appointment. After the doctor's appointment, we will pick him up and take him back to his house, free of charge. Great. It looks like we're going to have to take a break. I'm Helen Dora Hyden, Veterans Advocate with the Voice of the Veteran on ThinkTech Hawaii Live Streaming Network Series. We're talking today with Robert Kent, Immediate Past Department Commander of the DAV Hawaii. We'll be back in a minute, so stay tuned for more of the story. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. But I have a story, and I don't know where to start. I feel alone in a crowd. I can't sleep. I feel overwhelmed. I don't even know who I am anymore. I still have nightmares. I can't live like this anymore. I'm really not so good. But are you ready to listen? veteran. My victory was finding the strength to be a champion. My victory is having a job I can be proud of. At DAV, we help veterans get the benefits they've earned. My victory was finishing my education. My victory was getting help to put our lives back together. DAV provides veterans with a lifetime of support. My victory is being there for my family. Help us support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. We're back. We're live. I'm Helen Dora Hyden, Veterans Advocate, and this is Voice of the Veteran on Think Tech Hawaii Live Streaming Network Series, talking about Hawaii's disabled American veterans with Immediate Past Department Commander Robert Kent. Welcome back, Robert. Thank you. Thank you so much again for being here on this show. As we wrapped up the last segment, we were talking about the VAM uh, and the, and the coordination efforts and the volunteer drivers. Do you want to speak a little bit more about that? Yes, the national will pay, we pay for half of the van, and the national will pay the other half of the van to get the van. They will ship it over to Hawaii. Once it gets to Hawaii, they put the decals on it, then we give the van to the VA. The VA puts the license plates on the van, which is a government license plate, and then they will give a credit card in the van to buy the gas and pay for the maintenance of the van. And the volunteer drivers have to coordinate all the information in a book that uh, is in the van to take care of that. Yeah, that's a tremendous service. I helped out in Maryland before I moved to Hawaii with the van transportation program. It services so many veterans and it absolutely makes a difference for these veterans to get to their appointments. Yes, so. and Disabled American Veterans is the only ones that does that. Absolutely. The VFW and American Legion, all the other ones, they don't have the van program like we have in yeah, Hawaii. We're very proud of that program, absolutely. Yes, and you know, in Alaska, uh, back in 2000 when I was department commander, we were lucky to, Ford Motor Company actually donated a whole van to us. Mm -hmm. And it, it was made the National Magazine, so it shipped from Belly, Belling, Billing, Bellingsview, Washington, mm -hmm. over to Alaska via a ferry, and it was this big thing. It was amazing, and it, it, it helped so many veterans in Alaska, so I was proud to be part of that project as well. So yeah. we're going to segue now a little bit about women veterans. So the DAV has been a strong proponent about women veterans and making sure our rights are heard on Capitol Hill. We have our legislative walkthrough every midwinter conference, and our last uh, dep uh, national commander, David Riley, had given his uh, speech to the Senate committee, Senate Joint Senate Committee, and we're so proud to have him do that. This is a quadruple amputee from Alabama. I was proud to have known him when I lived in Alabama myself. So, but we're, we're just so proud of the legacy that we leave and the women veterans. This year, we have our first national women veteran on the national line. 
and um, she's in the magazine. Her name is Delphine Metcalf Foster. And I just wanted to kind of show this real quick. But uh, she is the first woman on the DAV National Line in over 90 years. She made history. We're very proud of her. We've had other women on the National Line, but she is our first National Commander. Congratulations, Ms. Foster. Thank you. Thank so, you. So thank you for that. Is there anything you'd like to say about women veterans? Yeah, the women veterans, uh, now the women veterans are in the service more than it was when I was in the service, because now they're in, they do combat, they do fly airplanes, they fly helicopters, they do everything that the men do. And they're serving right along beside the men. And when they get injured, they've got the same benefits that the men have. So there's a, the DAV and the VA is supporting the women veterans more than the civilian uh, outside do. Absolutely, Much. absolutely. And I, I, I'm a proponent. Here in Hawaii, I use the Women's Veterans Health Clinic at the Tripler, at the VA clinic. And it's been an amazing process here. They really take good care of us. And if women veterans, sometimes, you know, we might have um, apprehension of using the VA services, but I'm here to encourage all women veterans out there to go. And if you need to contact me, I will go with you. I will hand carry you. I will introduce you to the amazing staff here at uh, the VA clinics and get you plugged in. Because if you don't use these services, what happens is a lot of times these services get cut. And that's the last thing we want to see happen. So please reach out to me. I will go with you. A lot of veterans uh, are fearful about uh, things that happened to them that were traumatic, especially like military sexual trauma issues. Uh, they're fearful to talk to anybody. So if they need assistance, they need help, I'm there for you. Reach out to me, uh, Helen Dora Hyden at gmail.com or at the station, and I will help you work through that process. The other thing I wanted to congratulate is Joy Illum. She's our legislative director now. Yeah. She and I co-served on a Women's Veterans Advisory Committee back in the uh, 2000 when I was very active on the national circuit. But uh, I'm very proud of her for all the hard work that she's done. So congratulations to Joy. Yes. And on the uh, town hall meeting, we yes. had a woman came up and I was talking about the women veterans sitting in the same room with the men veterans waiting on the doctor's appointment. And they're trying to get the women veterans to have their own waiting room so that they don't have to sit in there with the men. And, uh, and the next thing that I'd like to talk about is the choice card. We have a choice card where that we can call in and they will make a doctor's appointment for us and then call us back and let us know when the doctor's appointment is. And this is outside of the VA. We do not have a VA hospital in Hawaii. We really need to have a VA hospital in Hawaii because there's over 400,000 veterans in the District of Hawaii. That means American Samoa, Guam, and all the Pacific Islands that uh, we have. And these veterans, uh, they don't have a VA hospital, so they have to use a choice card. Yes, and a lot of times it gets outsourced either to Tripler or to Choice programs to the civilian sector. I'm a, a recipient of the Choice program myself. And, right. and if uh, in the mainland, if you're 40 miles away or more, you can use the Choice card. Here, that's 40 miles away from a VA hospital. hospital that's right. And right. since we do not have a hospital, and because the timeliness, they really work on the timeliness to get us quality care. Right. Uh, because we don't have that here, sometimes they're, they're backlogged, we get to use the Choice card. And it's been a wonderful program. I've used it a lot myself. I encourage all veterans to use their Choice card whenever they can. You get to see great quality care. Just make sure that the records uh, from the civilian side is incorporated in your VA health care records after you're done with an appointment. Just make sure that that all gets incorporated. Sometimes it, there's a disconnect a little bit right. there. And if you don't have a choice card, you can go to the VA, and the VA will set you up and get you a choice card. Uh, it's at the uh, second floor of the VA. Uh, they have uh, where you get your ID card. Yes. For the VA. Is there before we wrap up the program? Is there anything you'd like to share with us? I know that you brought some information about the Disabled for Veterans for Life Memorial. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Uh, in. Uh, when I was in Washington, D.C., they have this National Memorial for the Disabled American Veterans. And it's a very good memorial. If you ever go to Washington, please go by and see this. It's right close to the Vietnam veteran uh, 
memorial. And it's, uh, if you go at nighttime, it's a little bit scary because they've got the pictures of the veterans uh, in the car, in the wall, here, like this one here. It shows the pictures of the veterans in the wall. Thank you for sharing that. I know yeah. that was a major project. It's been going on forever to get the funding yeah. to put up that memorial, but it's for us living disabled veterans. Right. Not, you know, it's not a, and, and it's got its place in our history. And I, I can't wait to visit that next time I'm in DC. Bob, is there anything else you'd like to share with the audience before we wrap up? I have Nothing one I thing, the of. meeting, the meetings for your DAV chapters across the state. There's multiple chapters uh, in Hilo, two in Honolulu, one in Lihua, Mililani, Pahoa, and Wailuka. Okay. And so we have all these wonderful uh, DAV chapter meetings. You can look them up on DAV.org. Look for a chapter in Hawaii, and you can get the information on when they meet. But it's here for you. Uh, you can resource this also that I put together for you. Please reach out to the DAV or any veteran service organization for that matter. Be part of, get connected, and get together back uh, the camaraderie ship. That's one thing I absolutely loved about being part of DAV is uh, the veterans that walked before me during active duty, you guys are my heroes. That's fine. You're absolutely my heroes. And I was lucky to involve my son in the journey. He grew up in the DAV. So he got to meet walking, living, talking histories, and he understood what it meant to pay for the price of freedom. Yeah. And now that he's active duty, he absolutely, uh, I think it inspired him to go active duty as an adult. So I'm very proud of him for that. But I just wanna thank you again for being on the show, and thank you so much for all that you do for the veterans here in Hawaii and all over the world, Robert. Well, thank, thank you so you. much, sir. Thank you. Really Wonderful having you. Being there. Okay, we are now out of time. We have to wrap it up. It has been a joy. I'm Helen Dora Hyden, Veterans Advocate, Voice of the Veteran on Think Tech Hawaii live streaming network series. We've been talking with Robert Kent, Immediate Past uh, Department Commander for the Disabled American Veterans of Hawaii. Thank you all for being here. Thanks to our broadcast engineer, Ray, and our floor manager, Cindy, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer who put it all together. Thanks to you, our audience, for watching. Please tune in and tell your friends to tune in every Thursday at 1 for more Voice of the Veteran. If you want to get our email and social media program advisories, click the link on thinktechhawaii.com. If you'd like to be a guest, I'd love to have you, underwriter or volunteer, or if you want to join us in the downtown studio in Pioneer Plaza, contact Jay at thinktechhawaii.com. If you want the links to our live streams or our previous broadcasts on Ustream.tv or YouTube.com, just go to ThinkTechHawaii.com. Go there and to our Facebook page and tell them that you like us. We'd love for you to like us. And of course, I will see you next Thursday for more Voice of the Veteran on ThinkTech. I'm Helen Dora Hyden, Veteran Advocate. Aloha, everyone.